Viewer's discretion. Before getting into today's video, please note that the animals seen here possess medically significant venom and should not be kept by the novice hobbyist. Attempts to replicate the action seen here or to own these animals should be considered thoroughly before doing so. I have many years of experience keeping arachnids with medically significant stings and bites, and while I'm excited to show you guys these beautiful animals, the last thing I'd want is for you to run out afterwards and purchase one without knowing the responsibility and risks involved. Please do your research, and please exercise caution. Never handle these animals. Thank you. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptilianus. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at my scorpions. I'm going to be doing an update. We're going to be seeing if any of them are hungry, do a feeding. And let me tell you, some of them are very hungry and it's pretty entertaining to see what they'll get up to. I'll leave it at that. You need to stick around to see it. Also, I want to say that at the end of the video, you're probably going to realize something with the amount of scorpions I show you and how it doesn't correlate to how many you thought I had. We're gonna have a little bit of a heart to heart at the end of this video and I hope you'll stick around to learn a bit and eh, kind of see a vulnerable Dijon you could say. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Stick around if you wanna learn a little bit about my negative experiences in the hobby because I have something to share with you. I do also wanna say, as always, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and every kinds of cool invertebrates like the scorpions are gonna see here today. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future content. I do my best to post about two videos a week. Also, I'm just gonna shamelessly plug my merch because I love doing that once in a while. Boom! If you want to support the channel and get some cool merch, check out the link down below to my merch store. It's there and you can buy some awesome merch and support the animals you see in this room. And myself. Put dinner on my plate. No, not crickets. Anyhow, let's get right into it everybody. I'm really excited to share with you how the scorpions are doing. Because many of the scorpion species I keep possess medically significant venom, all of them are housed in a large exoterra enclosure that is kept secured by a combination lock. Okay, everybody. First scorpion we are going to feed here is my female Hottentata friends, Wernie Rai. She is just right here under that wood. And if you notice, she actually just molted. It's pretty cool. So we gave her some time to harden up again. And now we're gonna try and feed her. In my experience, if you screw up and startle a scorpion, it's not interested in eating. So we're gonna try again at night and see if she'll be interested then. Okay guys, it's night time. I wanna try feeding my Hottentata friends Werni Rai one more time. We're gonna try and see what happens. If she doesn't wanna eat, she doesn't wanna eat, that's fine. Okay, so I have a pretty small superworm here. Oh, okay. Holy, come holy. What the? Oh my gosh. That was worth the wait. That was worth the wait. What on earth? Are you kidding me? What a reaction from this animal. She's got the super warm there. She's just trying to figure out how to get around it. Oh my goodness. Oh, she's eager to start eating. Look at those chelicerae going in for a taste. These animals have so much power. Really, really quite impressive. After the animal had the superworm subdued a few minutes, it randomly began thrashing around again. So, what did she do to stop it? She gave it a second envenomation. Next we have my male Hottentata friends, Bernie Rye. You just see him under here. Let's go ahead and give him a cricket. Nice.
This here is my female Hottentata Jayakari. We're gonna go ahead and see if she would like to eat as well. I have my suspicion she's in pre-mold, but we'll find out soon. Oh, look at her go. She's got it. Oh, she's checking out. Nope. Oh, my goodness. This girl is always pretty intense. Just like that. It's already subdued and envenomated. Crazy. You'll notice the animal is very careful to keep the prey away from its body until the venom has taken effect, which as you can see, it really has. Unbelievable. All right, let's get her cork hide back in here. It's sort of perfectly centered so as not to be close to the edge of the enclosure for her to climb. I'm just gonna pull it a bit. Sorry, girl. Didn't mean to startle you. Perfect. Okay, next is the male Hottentata Jayakari. Here he is. I do suspect that this animal is in pre-mold, but we're obviously going to try and feed him. Okay, got a cricket. Oh yeah, he's interested. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Pay close attention. Oh, this cricket's got some moves. Well, as you can see here, it appears that the animal is behaving in a defensive manner and not in one where it's hungry. Okay, so here is my last Centroides. Still not 100% sure what species is the one. If you've seen the video that like I had a few <laughs> scorplings from a female that was in my friend's suitcase. I suspect it's Gracilis, but I could be wrong. But yeah, let's see if she'll eat. Okay, hey, she's not down to eat, that's okay. No problem. But yeah, it's really cool actually seeing, I think the same species in Costa Rica on a leaf in the jungle in the South Pacific. Okay, here's one of my heterometris scorpions. See if they would like a cricket. Okay, yep. That was very eager <laughs> food response. Holy macaroni, okay. Happy scorpion. You gonna go into hiding? That's fine. All right, let's see the next one. Okay, here we have a beautiful heterometrous scorpion that just recently molted, and I can just tell by its feisty behavior that it's gonna be excited to eat for us. You can see the molt there. It's all crumbled up. Must have just been in the last week or so. This animal is gonna give us a show. Let's see if it wants a cricket. Oh, nice. Wow. Eee, look at that. Maybe they'll take a second one. Okay, here you go. Cricket number two. Wow, that is a hungry scorpion. Nothing like a fresh malt to get you eating a lot, eh? So she's just gonna hold that until they're ready to eat again after they finish the first one. What a lot of people don't know is that a scorpion's anus is right there behind that stinger. Right back here. This is not a tail. This is an extension of the body. Pretty cool fact. Okie doke. Before you decide to leave, no. Excuse me. No, I'm not giving you another cricket, holy. You're greedy. Okay, fine, fine. I think everybody would be happy if I did. So I'll give you one more cricket. You can have three. Goodness gracious, here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is that is greed. That is some greed. You got three crickets, where are you trying to go? Did you just let one go? You let it go. Or do you have it? Oh, what are you doing? Okay, let's just 
take a moment to think about our decisions so we don't fall. <laughs> All right, here. Try that again. Whoa, stinger action. You don't see that too often with these guys because they just are strong enough to subdue most of their prey without needing to use their stingers. Here, keep dropping it. There. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Greedy little guy. Okay, everybody, this here is my Pandinus Imperator. This is the Emperor Scorpion, and I have one male. Let's see if he'll eat for us. He got it. Well, that's a pretty happy scorpion. He's doing really well, as you can see. Probably gonna go hide now under his log. I've had him for almost four years now. So we've been through a lot together. Moved back from Vancouver. Lots of fun stuff with this boy. Great educational ambassador here. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all a pretty intense question. If you made an enormous mistake in the way that you were keeping an animal that might have even resulted in its passing, would you feel comfortable sharing that with the wider community, whether it was through a Facebook group, forum, or maybe a platform like this one here on social media? And if you were receiving that information and you knew better and thought that that was, you know, a mistake that you could have easily avoided, how would you go about treating that person? How would you respond to their vulnerability sharing that experience with you? Let me know in the comments section down below because this is an intricate part of the community and I think this is one of the things that stirs up the most oil on fire kind of shenanigans. This is where the elitists come out to play. This is where the trolls come out to play. This is where the vulnerability of the novice keeper is suppressed and I want to know how you think we can make the community more supportive. I want to know how you think it's safe to share that vulnerability, to grow from negative experiences. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can hopefully engage in a little bit of a conversation because friends, this one is important. Awesome. Okay everybody, so these are my larger heterometris scorpions. Fortunately, these ones seem to be kind of hit and miss whether they'll ever eat on camera, but we'll certainly try. So I have a male and a female. Oh. Okay, okay. Are you just going to let it go or are you going to eat it? Come on. Yes. Got to get it, get it. Okay. Guys, they're, they might be like, you know, let's do this for Dion. This is a nice video. We can say hi to the audience, show them we do care. We do like to eat on camera. I honestly feel like this is a miracle because when I feed them, I usually toss crickets in here and they eat them overnight because they're not big fans of eating on camera for me. Okay, well, I don't have super high hopes, but here is the last scorpion we're going to try to feed. Let's see what they make of a meal. Oh, what is going on? It's all just a fence. Okay, not interested. That's fine. I suspect this scorpion is in pre-molt and that may be why we're not seeing any feeding behavior, but who knows? Time will tell, I think. Still, what a cool animal. Oh, are you going to drink on camera for us? That's also nice to see. Maybe not. There are several core values I pride myself and strive to implement in my content as a YouTube creator, social media influencer, however you want to call what this is, what I'm doing. 
The first is openness. I like to be open with you all. I like to share my experience with you all. But the way I go about my openness is that I do so with a certain level of transparency. I like to be very transparent about my experience. I also like to be very humble in my approach because nobody's perfect. We're always all in the process of learning. Facts become inaccurate and inaccuracies become accuracies. There's always a stage of development and evolution, a process of growth that is continuous. And I feel the best way to go about that is with humility. The fourth thing is vulnerability. And I think that this is one of the trickiest things we social media influencers do because when you choose to be vulnerable, when you choose to be transparent and be very open with your audience, there are pros with this and there are cons. So when you choose to implement these values into your content, my personal opinion is that it makes for a more honest and open relationship with your audience. You know, I want you to get to know me. I want you to see my my experiences in the hobby in the most true form. I don't want to hide anything from you. There is a certain level of responsibility associated with being a content creator. And I feel like that responsibility ties into those four values that I shared. And with that being said, that's why I'm going to be sharing with you some of the struggles I dealt with months ago keeping my scorpions and why it is that I no longer have almost half of them. So allow me to explain. So when you keep as many animals as I do, it's very easy to develop routines and schedules to properly care for all of them. And one of the ways you can sort of deduce when you care for certain types of animals is based on their need or level of care. And when it comes to my arachnids, I'm usually caring for these animals once or maybe twice a week, which means that the rest of the week, I'm usually not focusing on them because I know that they need to be watered and fed once a week. For the slings, I might do it twice and then they're good. They thrive off negligence in a sense. But do they? Do they really? So here's the thing. Over the summer, I was following my routine. Everything I had sort of implemented as a schedule was working great. Water and feed the scorpions once a week. And several of the scorpion groups that I was part of recommended not to offer water dishes to desert species. And the reason for that was that sitting water, many people felt, promotes too much humidity, which can lead to mycosis, fungal infections, in these animals. So I did what everyone else did. I would miss the enclosures on the side of the walls and maybe add a bit of water to one corner of the substrate for a bit of humidity and I was confident that they would be able to drink that night, rehydrate their bodies if necessary and that relative humidity would dry out before the end of the next week when I'd be misting them again. Unfortunately, over the summer, things got hot in the room and although my schedule was working week after week after week, it didn't one week and when I went to go water my scorpions, quite a few of them had passed away. My Androctinus baluchicus pair, my Androctinus Leovelli pair, my Europlectes fisheri, which was one of my favorite scorpions I owned, the crazy little orange one that you guys love, and my Hottentata Hottentata. So, unfortunately, I lost quite a few of my scorpions, and it was quite the blow to me. It was as if one whole side of the enclosure that I housed them in for security reasons was just wiped out. I'm assuming because that part of the lights under them that heat them just got too hot, too dry, and the week long gap between care, it, it killed them. And I felt completely responsible as I should have because I was relying on a schedule that was working for me. It wasn't working now and I should have thought about that because it was warmer in the room. They wouldn't last as long without being hydrated, that sort of thing. So what did I learn from this terrible experience? Well, for one, I decided to say, forget what I had been told, I'm going to start using tiny little water dishes in all of my scorpion enclosures, whether they're tropical species, because those obviously get their water dishes, or not. The desert ones now have small little pucks that are constantly filled. I check on them regularly to make sure that they always have access to water. And thankfully, things are fine. They don't have mycosis. They're not dealing with anything like that. The enclosures stay pretty dry, so they're fine. It's good now. That was a very hard lesson to learn. 
I love all my animals, whether they're invertebrates, whether they're reptiles, it doesn't matter, I love them all. And to lose those animals was a really hard thing. And I get nervous sharing these things with you guys sometimes because I know that there's always gonna be a few people that want to make a point out of really, you know, attacking and and I think a lot of the times it comes from a good place because we do have a huge responsibility as social media influencers or educators to share the good and the bad I feel that's my opinion it's great to show all the positive things you're doing and the positive experiences you're having I also think it's really important to show the negative things you're experiencing and how you grew and overcame those challenges so here I am being vulnerable, being honest, being open, and being humble. I want you to know that I made a huge mistake in the way that I was caring for my scorpions, but I also want you to see that I corrected that mistake, and going forward, I'm gonna do so much better. So I hope you can appreciate that. I'm really sorry for those of you that, you know, feel discouraged by the way that I kept my scorpions and, and had them pass away. Believe me, the, the biggest victim besides the scorpions is me because it really hurts. And I waited quite a few months to tell you guys this because ultimately I needed to. Um, yeah, like it's, it's something I needed to share with you all. And there are a few other animals I need to talk about in the same regard at some point. Two of them being my giant white leg scolopendras. There's gonna be a negative update about that too at some point. There are ups and downs with pet care. It's really hard, but I do always want to make sure that I am open with you all, and so I hope that you can at least appreciate that. Better yet, I hope someone else out there who is not keeping a tiny water dish in their desert scorpion enclosures may reconsider that having seen my mistake. You know, I wanna be the example that you never have to have, so. There you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. It's nice to see an update on the scorpions, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, there was some terrible news there as well. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's kind of sucky to say the least. But again, it's all part of the learning experience. It's part of the hobby and, and growing. And my hope is that by sharing my negative experience, you can avoid it. All right. With that being said, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed watching today's video. If you'd like to see more videos about scorpions, check out the link up above to my scorpion video playlist. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you all in another video again soon, later this week. Take care, everybody.